NAP focus on using technology in teaching learning. It also promotes multilingualism and the power of mother tongue or local languages in teaching learning. It also mentions that multilingualism has excellent cognitive benefit for the young students. Sunita, as you spoke about power of mother tongue and local language, let me tell you uh, today is 21st February 2023. This day is celebrated as International Mother Language Day worldwide to promote awareness of linguistic and cultural diversity and to promote multilingualism. On the day of International Research Conference, let's focus on NEP's important pillars, research and innovation achieved through multilinguistic and multidisciplinary education. Before we begin the program, let's salute our nation. I request all of you to please rise for Rashtragan. Thank you all. We will have our traditional lamp lighting ceremony as a tribute to Goddess Saraswati. Let's seek the blessing of Goddess Saraswati to make the day this day peaceful. I request all the dignitaries to proceed towards the idol of Goddess Saraswati. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Throughout this research journey, we have with us Dr. Anju Kapoor, Principal, Usha Pravid Gandhi College of Arts, Science and Commerce, Dr. Shastri Nimagadda, Researcher, Curtin University, Perth, Australia, Dr. Sukhada from IIT Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi, Dr. Sashi Kumar, Executive Director, CDAC, Mumbai, Dr. Sangeeta Chakravarti from Dempo College, Goa, Dr. Snehalata Sherude, Assistant Professor, North Maharashtra University, Jalga, Dr. Pallavi Jamsandekar, Director, Bharti Vidyapit, Sangli, Dr. Neil Mani, Associate Professor, Center of Artificial Intelligence and Research, Haridwar, Dr. Abhijit Banu Bhopade, uh, Principal, MIT Institute of Computer Science, Mumbai, Dr. Chaya Gosavi, Associate Professor, 
क्यूमिन्स कॉलेज ऑफ इंजिनिअरिंग फॉर वेमेन पुणे मिस संगीता निमकर टेक्निकल स्पेशलिस्ट युनायटेड पोस्ट सर्व्हिसेस न्यू जर्सी युएसए व्हाइस प्रिन्सिपल अँड आय क्यू एस सी कोऑर्डिनेटर मिस स्मृती नानावटी पी एस सी कोऑर्डिनेटर डॉक्टर स्वप्नाली लोटलीकर अँड कन्व्हेनर ऑफ आय सी टी 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 ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री डॉक्टर मनीषा दिवटे वी वेलकम ऑल डिग्नेटरीज अँड रिसर्च डेलिगेट्स प्रेझेंट हिअर वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू Let's greet our today's guest. We request our Vice Principal and IQSC Coordinator, ma'am, to felicitate today's guest, Dr. Sasi Kumar, sir. And to Dr. Abhijit, sir. Thank you ma'am thank you sirs Albert Einstein once said the leader is one who out of clutter brings simplicity out of discord harmony and out of difficulty opportunity being a leader is no easy task it takes hard work courage and risk taking ability we invite our leader dr anju kapoor our beloved principal usha pravin gandhi college of arts science and commerce to give more insights but due to some urgent work principal madam will not be available today if she will be little late uh, we request our vice principal ms ruti nanavati madam to convey her message on her behalf Uh, i am here today uh, to convey the message on behalf of principal ma'am she will be joining us very soon but uh, she only arrived in mumbai she was at ugc and arrived in mumbai early this morning and will join us soon for the conference so uh, she has sent her message across uh, i would like to read this message for all of you she says uh, i am delighted to once again host the international conference on emerging trends in digital technologies 2023 on the 21st of february at usha pravin gandhi college of art science and commerce that has received an accreditation of a plus by nac in october 2022 the college comprehends that technological changes has a potential to create shared prosperity and smart solutions in the world's biggest challenges uh, at the same time its exponential pace overwhelms existing institution leaving us as individuals exposed to uncontrolled risks some of these risks include geopolitical crisis rising polarization and looming climate crisis topics of concern that have predominated several discussion forums in the past decade there is an urgent need for leaders to seize the opportunity to direct technology towards positive ends at the late french cultural uh, theological uh, paul virero observed when things work in new ways they also break in new ways when we invented the ship we also invented the ship wreck the same holds true for the new technology and stakes are higher this should be this should not make us afraid of technological progress but it should make us humble and mindful of the progress being uh, hard earned and easily lost advancing technological changes and rolling out new technologies at the scale to meet the world's most pressing challenges is a great imperative of our day and our age if we meet the challenge the outcome will be more rewarding prosperous and resilient economies uh, and societies the theme of the conference is very relevant in the light of the present scenario especially keeping in mind the attention 
that it has to be directed to the millennials. The teachers have to be innovative presenters who display extensive research skills that will inspire their students to take ownership while they mitigate the potential dangers of this emerging trends in the new age of digital world. I applaud all the organizers and researchers who are associated with this conference and wish them a great success. This is the message which is conveyed by Anju Ma'am and I read it on her behalf. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for conveying principal ma'am message. As famous essayist William Foster says, quality is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligent direction, and skillful execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Our college IQSC, that is Internal Quality Assurance Self, plays a significant role in designing and maintaining quality assurance of the college activities, overall academic and administrative performance. We invite our vice principal and IQSC coordinator, Ms. Nutin Anavati Madam, to speak on IQSC and its role. Morning once again. And um, I'm here today to talk about a uh, collaboration that we have with the IT department, uh, the ICETDT 2023. Uh, the IQSC collaborates with uh, the IT department every year since the last four years. In a line, consecutive four years, we've been organizing this conference. Uh, and uh, initially, way back, uh, four years back, we organized this in collaboration with um, the government of Maharashtra. It was an offline session that we organized. Then uh, due to the pandemic, we had to switch to the online mode. The next year we uh, held this conference, uh, ICETDT International, because uh, we were online. And uh, uh, this was continued for the next year because uh, due to the pandemic again, while we allowed some of our students to come uh, offline and present their papers. This year we are holding this in an offline mode and uh, once again I would like to welcome um, you know we have uh, uh, Shastri sir joining online where we have our esteemed guest present here offline with us. So Dr. Sasi Kumar, uh, Senior Director CDAC. Dr. Shastri, who is present with us online, I think he can hear us and see us. And Dr. Abhijit, the principal MIT Institute of Computer Science, Mumbai, I once again welcome you, sir, and thank you for giving your valuable time to us. Uh, let me tell you, as we are all aware that, you know, the technological advancements are happening fast. And uh, IQSC of the college believes that we should be staying abreast with the latest innovations in the field of technology. Keeping this in mind, the IQSC felt that uh, we should give our students and faculty a platform and an opportunity to use uh, the best resources of the college, uh, utilize them and uh, bring on this platform where uh, we can uh, you know, discuss, exchange new ideas, learn from each other and collaborate to push the uh, boundaries of IT uh, research further. So uh, with the same idea in mind, uh, holding this conference is one of the testaments that the IQSC is giving for, uh, you know, it's resilient, uh, uh, you know, trust for uh, improving the um, uh, quality education of the college. So with this in mind, uh, I would like to uh, welcome you all once again and uh, uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, deliberate on the discussions. We have our panelists present here. We can hear from them. So on behalf of the entire team of IQAC, I would uh, wish you all an enriching and a rewarding day and have a great day ahead. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. 
a great philanthropist, John Farron said, true dreamer is one who navigates in the dark. The convener is essential in organizing any event and keeping things on track. We invite our ICETDT convener, Dr. Manisha Devde, to elaborate on the idea of this conference. Thank you, Dr. Neelam, Smrita Madam. Um, I hope that all of you are enjoying this session from the beginning. Uh, just a few notes on this as a convener. On behalf of organizing committee and department of IT um, of ICDT, I would like to welcome you all at Usha Pravin Gandhi College of Arts Science and Commerce. It's my honor to see you all at the inaugural ceremony of ICDT 23. As a convener of a conference, I express my sincere gratitude to the dignitaries and the participants present here. We are very fortunate this morning to have Dr. Sasi Kumar, sir, Executive Director, CDAC Mumbai, Dr. Shastri Nimagadda, Researcher School of Management, Business Information System, Curtin University, uh, Australia, Dr. Abhijit Banu Bakore, sir, Principal MIT Institute of Computer Science, Bandra, Mumbai. The objective of this conference is to provide the platform and promote the, promote the exchange of research idea among the researchers. Conference is the medium where researchers meet the experts in their domain, reunite and build the network of researchers. I'm thankful to your faculty and supervisors who encourage you to participate in the conference. Let's give a big round of applause to them. I'm very pleased to have great advisory committee members with us who timely help us in organizing this conference. Dr. Pallavi Jamsandekar, Director, Bharatiya Vidhapit Sangli, Dr. Sangeeta Chakravarti, Associate Professor, SS Dempo College, Goa, Dr. Abhijit Sir from MIT College, Dr. Snehalata Shirut from Kavaitri Bahina Bhai Chaudhary, North Maharashtra University, Jalga, Dr. Neelamani, Associate Professor, MIT University, Dr. Sukhata from IIT BHU, Dr. Chaya Gosavi, Associate Professor, Cummins College of Engineering. We kept the theme of this conference very broad, which is divided into the five different tracks. The first, AI and intelligence system, data analytics, networks and cloud computing, security and computing, management and technology. We published our first CFP on four papers in month of July 2022 on EasyChair and other social media platform. So research is not the liking of everyone's. Some are self-motivated, some do as a part of their curriculum. But yes, my organizing committee uh, team members not only help them to uh, not only help them to plan the conference, but also took a lot of efforts in guiding researchers in their technical queries. In total, we received 50 plus papers from New Delhi, Haryana, Assam, Pune, Puducherry, and our own number. Four five papers were withdrawn uh, and three four were rejected. We should celebrate here that we have total 42 presenters here today. Uh, out of those, 20 papers will be presented online and rest of the uh, papers will be presented as offline. This way, one day our conference will cover a uh, keynote address by dignitaries, uh, followed by the technical sessions. The papers are very good and we have arranged them in the three tracks. Uh, track one will be online track and track two and three will be offline. Session chairs for those uh, tracks are Dr. Chaya Gosavi, Professor Cummins uh, College of Engineering, Pune, Dr. Varsha Patak, Professor and Coordinator Research and Innovation Cell, IMR Jalga, and uh, Dr. Sushopti Gavde, Professor Computer Engineering, Department Pillai College, uh, Pillai Engineering College, Mumbai. I'm happy to announce that we have two UGC care shortlisted journals uh, namely, International Journal of Digital Literacy and Digital Competency, International Journal of Information Security Sciences. We published a shortlisted paper in the journal and rest of them will be the part of conference proceedings. My convener, my co-convener, sorry, my co-convener, organizing committee members, principal madam, registrar madam, my students, volunteers, non-teaching staff, uh, helped this conference to work. I'm thankful to all who come here 
and attending this conference online. I'm sure that we will have a fruitful interactions and will make this conference as a success. I want to express to my a feeling through this Sanskrit shloka. Jnanavane na sukhavan, jnanavane na jivati, jnanavane na balavan, tasmat jnanamaya bhor. This karth is that jnani insan hi sukhi hai, jnani insan hi sahi arth mein jita hai, jo jnani hai vahi balavan hai, is liye tu jnani ban. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for providing details about our conference. As already informed by ma'am, shortlisted peer reviewed research papers will be published in UGC Care Listed Journal and are proceeding International Journal of Advanced and Innovative Research, having an ISSN 23947780. We request our vice principal, ma'am, and other dignitaries release the conference proceeding. Thank you. Thank you all. We request all dignitaries to take seats in the front row. Now it's time to seek knowledge from exports. Today's first keynote speaker is Dr. Shastri. I request Dr. Sopnali Lotlikar, Madam, PSAID Coordinator, Usha Pravin Gandhi College of Art, Science and Commerce, to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Shastri, sir. Good morning, one and all present over here. It is my privilege to introduce Shastri sir. Shastri Nimagada is presently a research fellow at School of Management, Curtin University, Perth, Western Australia. Shastri sir has more than 30 years of industry experience. He works for Slumbergar, you know, Slumbergar company in multiple geo market worldwide as an expert geo sciences. He worked for Bafra Joint Operational Petroleum Company in Kuwait and Sentosa, Sydney in Australia. Shastri sir previously worked for several petroleum operating and service companies in India, Australia, Uganda, Kuwait, UAE, Egypt, Malaysia, Colombia, Indonesia, Russia, including several assignments in the USA. In addition to industry practice, Shastri sir has vast academic experience. He did his MTech and PhD in petroleum engineering from IIT Kharagpur. He obtained Masters of Information Technology and PhD in Information System with distinction from the Curtin University of Technology, Australia. His industry research interests are data modeling, digital ecosystem and technologies, data integration, repository design, data processing, interpretation and knowledge mapping, including research in domain application. He is a professional member of AIS, AAPG, SCG, ASCG, IEEE, and many more. He already published and presented more than 160 research and technical papers in various international journals, 
and international conference proceedings in the area of business information system. He has been part of UPG family for a long time. He is a guiding force and mentor for all our conferences. Warm welcome you, sir. And for our conference, I request Shastri, sir, to address all of us. Over to you, Shastri, sir. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Yes, OK. Sir. And um, thank you very much. Uh, I'm speaking actually from Hyderabad. Um, I land up uh, Hyderabad uh, yesterday. Um, at the request of uh, this uh, keynote speak. Um, the um, I offered two um, subjects like um, digital health and the other one is a digital business. I think uh, Neelam chose to um, digital businesses. So I'm happy uh, to share my knowledge uh, with the um, August guidance of uh, the um, college audience and researchers. And um, I am. Um, at the moment, a research fellow from uh, Curtin University School of Management. Uh, business information systems. Uh, I'm specialized in BIS. And. Um, recently, I presented this uh, digital uh, businesses uh, in the. Um, research forum in one of the uh, AIS conferences in um, Melbourne University in Victoria um, in Eastern States. So um, some part of the presentation was also done in um, Hawaii uh, Hicks conference uh, in USA um, before last week. So um, I thought I will share some of the knowledge that I acquired. During um, last um, um, five, six years on business information systems and um, uh, digital technologies. I like to share some of the. Um, the slides that I have. World is uh, uh, basically the um, full of artifacts. The what artifact is, and the artifact is driven by a lot of information. It's so called uh, when I learned it from. Uh, masters and PhD programs in Curtin University. Um, it is so called information system artifact. Information system articulated business logistics and supply chains. This is um, one of the topics that. Based on that topic, um, I re have recently been awarded my uh, third PhD in Curtin University. And uh, the topic is interesting in the sense that uh, the logistics and supply chains have been severely affected by recent uh, pandemic times, the in especially in the spatial context. The artifact. You take a simple artifact like your medical record is an artifact. Your boarding pass is an artifact. Our uh, cognitive human body is an artifact. With a lot of information, wealth of uh, information that we have to understand and assimilate and um, do mapping and modeling. Um, in terms of space and time. So. 
the data that we acquired and already existing on open source on social networks we wanted to demonstrate that our models um, are constructive and positive and they are interpretative in terms of uh, knowledge mapping and um, um, understand the cognizance of the logistics and supply chains in spatial dimensions. It's called, you can see a lot of abbreviations in my uh, slides, BLSC, Business Logistics and Supply Chains. I think um, this topic may be interesting for most of your researchers, uh, especially who are engaged in business, uh, uh, digital businesses. Based on our research, uh, mm, we published uh, some um, interesting articles, um, high impact uh, journals. Uh, one of them is uh, um, a business research journal, Journal of uh, Business Research is called. And uh, it has created a lot of uh, attention on internet, uh, which has um, around 11 impact factor. And these uh, research motivations have further encouraged us to continue our research, um, especially in this in terms of logistics, how logistics can be managed in spatial and temporal dimensions. Sorry, I lost the contact. This is the, one of the papers which I was mentioning um, on wires, I think. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you are on this slide, no? Information systems articulated business logistic and no? Mm -hmm. Have you changed the slide? I, uh, I'm coming back. I think uh, I by mistake I pressed the uh, link. Okay. Start sharing it once again, sir. This is uh, on new emerging uh, concepts of petroleum digital Hello? digital ecosystem systems. Sorry to disturb you, sir. Uh, you are on the first slide. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the, I don't know why it is reverberating. Yeah, sir, will you share it once again? Stop sharing and start sharing your screen once again. Yeah. Okay, now it is moving, sir. You are on second slide. Okay, the, it is still reverberating. Yeah, it's moving now, sir. Is it all right? Yeah, yeah. it is third slide of your presentation. So the key definitions which I am using here is a sustainability, ecosystem, knowledge management, and uh, the uh, information system, and attribute journey mapping and modeling. Is it clear? But I am. Uh, Hearing uh, double voice. Yes, sir. We could see your slides and these are moving. Mm. We could hear it properly. Okay. Yeah. The Key, key definitions which I am using is sustainability, sustainability in, in spatial and periodic dimensions. dimensions. It's, it's a, a digital, digital ecosystem, ecosystem can be a, a supply, 
Hello. Hello. It is uh, echoing. echoing effect. Effect. I don't echoing know how, how it is coming. coming. Is, is it okay, okay if I can, can start, start and, and then, then come back? back? Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah. yeah. The uh, is echoing, echoing effect. 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 I am um, um, little, little disturbed, disturbed by my word. Hello, uh, sir. Your two systems were on, so I have moving to one system and on another system you can speak. Yeah. Okay. Now there won't be any echo. Okay, okay, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Still, Still uh, uh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, so yeah. mute to them. They, they just have to so he 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 mute the right one. He unmute the right one. Hello? 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 Hello, sir. I'm, I'm still, still seeing, seeing the uh, echoing, echoing effect. effect. I don't, I don't know if it is from my side, side or your side. side. Hello? Hello, sir? Yeah. yeah. Hello, sir? Yes. yes. So, uh, Can, can, can I can come I back, back again? Hello? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, please unmute yourself. Hello, sir. Please unmute yourself. Shasi, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, we will continue our session after some time. Uh, there is some technical glitch. Okay, so we will resolve that in that time. We will continue in the next session. Will it be okay, sir? Yeah, I'll talk to you on the
हेलो हेलो सर शास्त्री सर Can participant hear me? Yeah. Yes, they can hear you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, due to some technical problem, we were not able to hear Sashri sir. So, we'll continue our session, and uh, sir will join us in some time. Uh, I am Rajesh Maurya, and I am here to welcome another very distinguished. Guest for this today's conference. I am pleased to introduce Dr. M. Shashi Kumar, a senior director at the Center of Development of Advanced Computing, as a distinguished speaker at this research conference. With over decades of research experience in the field of information technology, Dr. Shashi Kumar has made significant contribution to the several research projects, specifically in the domain of e learning, natural language processing artificial intelligence, accessibility, and more. Dr. Sasi Kumar is a highly accomplished individual and currently serves as executive director at CDAC Mumbai. He has been with CDAC since 1987 and has made significant contribution to the field of information technology. Dr. Sasi Kumar completed his BTEC from IIT Madras and went on to complete his post graduation from ISC Bangalore and his doctorates from Bits Pilani. With a keen interest in artificial intelligence and educational technology, Dr. Sisi Kumar has co-authored several books, one of which is with Prentice Hall on parallel computing. Let me just tell you, I have also read his book when I was in my master's. His expertise in the field of uh, in this field is well established 
and he is super he has supervised six phd students who have completed their research under his guidance and three more students currently in progress i'm sure that the number has already changed dr sachi kumar has initiated and nurtured several projects in the area of artificial intelligence and e learning during his illustrious career he has published over uh, more than 100 research papers and is a member of program committee of numerous international conferences dr sachi kumar is also a member of board of studies and advisory board of select institutions showcasing his leadership and managerial skills additionally he is active on various social media platforms like facebook linkedin and researchgate throughout his illustrious career mr dr shashi kumar has conceptualized and designed numerous research projects and developed complete solution for large scale applications in the full field of resource scheduling he has also offered consultancy in the domain of artificial intelligence e learning and many more additionally dr sachi kumar has extensive research experience in diverse field of computing and has exhibited exemplary leadership and manager skills including course coordination planning and execution dr sachi kumar's area of expertise as i said includes artificial intelligence educational technologies open source software and accessibility he has specialized knowledge of expert systems resource scheduling soft computing machine learning and natural language processing we are very fortunate to have dr sachi kumar and he is with us to share his extensive knowledge and experience with us at this conference and we look forward to gain valuable insights from his keynote address i welcome you sir okay uh, very good morning and uh, first of all thank you for uh, inviting me to this event because usually my audience is uh, it and computer people it is very very rare to go uh, to be able to talk to uh, commerce science and other other disciplines and also this is my first entry to this building although other buildings of this campus i am quite familiar dj sangvi I have a lot of associated with the JSNV in terms of their board of studies. I have almost 15 to 20 groups of students working with me from the JSNV for the last three years. We actually build uh, educational solutions uh, and we give it a very good. So, technology in education is something that I am very very passionate about, and for last uh, 20 years also. it's something that i'm very actively trying to do on my, my personal level as well as on uh, official level uh, okay i'll try to keep the time so um, as as we uh, speak we are actually seeing digitization in some aspect of computing everywhere right i don't think i need to give you any example from any of these um, blogs we have all seen that you know telemedicine and all that happening in health governance a uh, lot of solutions are being now i think we did mention about one stop solutions automatic approvals integrated blah blah all that kind of things e-commerce i'm sure all of you have done uh, shopping from uh, flipkart and amazon and you continue to do that and all of that i think 5 years back you possibly wouldn't have thought that you would be doing that those kind of things right and uh, also many other services and particularly for me education is a focus area so we'll talk about it why should we look at digitization in education because we are full of problems in education and as your students and as teachers we all accept that we are full of problems and our job is to solve them but we actually create more problems okay <laughs> so the the first problem are the teachers no not the teachers but about the teachers right so we don't have enough teachers of uh, the quality that we want and the quantity that we want and again all the colleges will uh, certify to that they are not able to get uh, good quality teachers in adequate number to meet the requirements we have uh, challenges in infrastructure um, you know, laboratories and um, other other support systems that is required to run quality education we have uh, problems in content we are still uh, you know a foreign dependent content users 
we go and pick up uh, foreign books and foreign slides and foreign this, foreign that, but we do very little of our own in terms of content. And they have challenges because most of these content is not really appropriate to our audience for uh, the Madam referred to um, uh, Indian language based education. How much content is available in these languages? Right. So they, they, these are challenges. And I think one of the really hard bottleneck is assessment. We give one set of objectives. We teach another uh, set of things and we assess a third set of things. Right. So we say we want to nurture blah, 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 all that kind of things. Ultimately, we'll ask, write an essay on blah, blah. So we have a mismatching assessments. We don't, we have uh, technology solutions in uh, doing a good job of assessments. So there is, there is a lot of problem that, you know, that's what we have been looking at. So our, our focus has been uh, trying to see what can technology do to alleviate some of these problems. So when we do uh, MOOC courses, for example, SWIM or NPTEL and all that, some sense I am addressing the teacher problem because one teacher giving a course is actually reaching the whole country at the nuke and corner. So quantity and quality I am trying to do, not necessarily substituting for a physical teacher that would have been there, but he can at least able to do much better than what it was before. Okay, so. This, this, so we have enough problems in education that we can possibly work for uh, you know decades more, and we still would have problems remaining. And uh, the um, uh, national education, the new education policy, also that Madam referred to, which one is has a huge role for technology for the same reason, right? Because without technology, we will not be able to meet the educational target that we have set for ourselves, and that too we are all boasting and also crying because we would have the largest young workforce among all the countries very shortly. I think we are, we are possibly the youngest country in terms of the average age of the workforce uh, currently, even beating China by orders of magnitude. So training them, keeping them uh, you know, up to date with something or the other in terms of technology, career and all that are huge challenges. Okay. And of course, uh, given India's geography, you know, um, uh, doing a course in Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore would be a relatively easy thing, but doing it in some uh, remote village would be a, di a different challenge. I mean, I, I come from a Pakka village, you know, um, uh, which where uh, when, when I went to IIT, nobody even knew what engineering was. So finding out opportunities or giving them you know, mechanisms to reach out is, is really a challenge and technology is the only way we're going to look at that. And uh, so and the NEP also visualizes lots of uh, exciting things. So you can do a course in any institution in the country on any subject and transfer that credit and that uh, content to any other institution in any other subject. That's a fantastic challenge. But look at what it will involve. How does that institution understand what was taught here in terms of the detailed content and syllabus to know whether this actually matches my requirement or not? So these are all huge areas where there is a lot of opportunities for technology to work on. So of course, if I want to talk about technology, I think I can talk for two days without a stop and still will be left out of things. So I'm going to pick up two areas which I've particularly been very passionate about for the last uh, couple, uh, you know, maybe a couple of decades. And I'll spend a little bit of time. Again, each of these are huge areas. So I'm, uh, we won't, I won't uh, take away too much of time from that angle. So virtual labs, and it is something that again is some uh, something that has really opened people's eyes during the pandemic. So when the pandemic um, uh, you know uh, stuck and uh, lockdown was announced at nationwide, the first thing I think was hit was the schools and colleges. How do you teach the students? And if you don't teach, you know you have a lot of people loses their one year. How do you if you don't teach? How do you assess them? How do you move them ahead? So there were challenges. So everybody instantaneously became online lecturers with whatever you know, all the jugad stories that you are seeing on the uh, internet with you know suspended uh, mobile phones and all that kind of things were being invented. So take care. Lectures was not a problem. And assessment, oh, anyway, you all copy from each other even when you're in other exams also. So it's okay. We can do something around. You get some marks. What, about, what do you do for labs? particularly schools. I mean, how can you do uh, 8, 9, 10 uh, physics, chemistry, biology without actually having access to labs? So we had the solution. I mean, um, CDAC, we had worked on and built 170 virtual labs 
covering physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, and some labs in English. And we had made it already available free to the entire country just two, three years before. And we had also trained about 50,000 teachers across the country, every state. So there was, we were ready. But people were not interested because, you know, I mean, you can only go to the physical lab, so what was the interest? And when the pandemic came, there was no alternative. So, I mean, even CBSC and NCRT came to us and say, no, this is absolutely fantastic. And this is the only way we're going to be able to do justice to this. So, and in that same spirit, the you know, education policy also explicitly mentions virtual labs as one of the key ingredients. And I'll tell you a little bit about uh, what it, why uh, that is and what it's going to do. Okay, so our our solution was called All Apps, and I'm, I'm not trying to market uh, All Apps. By the way, I mean, it is a free resource, so I don't have to market it. You can go online and go to allapps.edu.in and access all of these labs for free. And uh, now uh, NCRT has also picked it up, and all these labs are now becoming available under the Diksha platform for school education. So if you have uh, brothers and sisters in studying school, and if you're not aware of All Apps, go and tell them. It, it is it's something that will be very useful. So as of today, we have over 200 virtual labs covering science, maths, and English, and all the subjects from class six to 12 will come under virtual labs in another couple of years time. Okay, we are working with Amrita University on this. So we started this journey about 10 years back. Okay, so it, I mean, again, these are not things that happens overnight. It's a huge uh, exercise. And uh, now we are actually working on the next phase of building 500 more labs. So this is what that uh, the landing page of the OLAPS portal looks like. So you click on the, uh, the subject that you want, and then there are uh, classes, and you click on the class, then you have the labs in the class, and then you can click on the lab and actually perform that activity. So that's a quick snapshot of where we are. Okay, so uh, laboratories are recognized as important devices in the learning process because you get a hands-on feel of the lessons learned. And again, something that we all talking about, you know, textbook theory, everybody knows. But when something in reality, when your car gets stuck on uh, mud or uh, sand or something like that, you don't understand that all the physics that you learned actually has to be brought to bear there. Connecting the theory to the real life, focus on experiment as a key paradigm in science. Okay, so and we also understand from uh, every teacher's experience that when you, you listen to all of this, by the time you are out of the door, 80 to 90 percent would have been evaporated, absorbed by the walls and the air inside. And uh, if I demonstrate something to you, you possibly will remember that portal. Ah, huh, yes, I remember seeing an all apps portal because I'm showing you something. But if you were to do something together, you will, um, you will actually have a much better sense of understanding. This is a very famous quote uh, about education and something that sustains why um, what is called active uh, learning and in, uh, involving the students is important. But at the same time, you have a cost and space requirements for physical infrastructure and equipments. So if you want to do uh, chemistry labs, you need uh, sulfuric acid, um, to hydrochloric acid, um, uh, sodium, blah, blah, all that. Uh, um, uh, raw material has to be procured time and again. For schools which have barely can afford one classroom or one teacher, you can't imagine that they're going to have a full-fledged physics or chemistry lab there. So we do limited access that to in uh, group mode. And uh, we still have a big challenge on how do how do the young students are, uh, you know uh, attend to uh, these labs. So that that still remains an open challenge. And we have a lot of other scenarios like uh, dangerous reactions, time taking task, or pen, uh, or like um, how how does a pendulum behave in Jupiter or Moon? I can only explain to you verbally. Right? So I can't I can't actually show you other what this is going to look like or uh, how uh, an atomic reaction takes place or how uh, a mosquito's life cycle works. All these are time, uh, time variable because some are too fast, some are too slow. Both of it, I cannot demonstrate or I cannot do it in the class. So these are all challenges we have in actually using the labs or if, if at all you have, and in most cases we may not even have the labs. So if you go over to go to virtual labs, that is you know, simulation based labs, you have unconstrained availability. As I said, these websites are available day in, day out, and across the world. Anybody can access them. And so um, uh, the access cost is just your internet speed. I mean, internet connectivity is the only thing that you will require. We have no other in investment. But these are actually software programs. It is not contained in terms of writing some note, but there's full-fledged software programs simulating the 
uh, behavior, so therefore the development cost can be high. So they they um, they kind of mimic the reality, and uh, so some of these things will be skipped for the time being. But uh, are are these virtual labs really useful? Are they effective? Many believe that they are enabling education because, as I said, many there are possibly large number of schools, particularly the state board schools, which do not have large facilities. I mean, I have personally gone to many of the schools which has just two classrooms and they run the whole school. So there will be something called a lab, but inside will be all cobwebs and you know other those kind of things, right? So there, that is the place where these the role of these becomes very significant. But even if you have physical labs available. We believe that these technologies can actually be significant for reasons I will I'll tell you in a, in a minute. But there are also people who feel that, you know, I mean, for example, if I give you only virtual labs in chemistry, you will not feel chemistry, right? If you do, if you can't spell hydrogen sulfide or if you can't break a test tube and burn a little bit of your finger, at least with sulfuric acid, you don't, you won't feel that you have actually done a chemistry lab at night. So, we, we are very clear that we are not saying that uh, give away all the physical lab and switch here. You use technology as amplifiers, not replacements. So this is something we are very clear because we don't, obviously in all of these teachers roles are very, 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 very important. Okay, so there's no underwriting them. We are not looking at replacing them, but saying if a teacher can do one bit here and it can reach uh, and make become a thousand bits across, that's the spirit that we were, we are trying to work on. And uh, so what we did was we actually made sure that the labs that we build are a comprehensive ecosystem. So it had the theory associated, the, um, uh, the um, details of how the experiment is to be built, the actual process, viva, everything was given. And if an experiment required you to plot a graph, even a graph plotting was enabled online. So you would actually get uh, what the graph would look like, the way to record them, um, uh, readings. The full ecosystem was provided online. And uh, we also brought in enough uh, pedagogical aspects and other things. So what interventions or what affordances should be provided at each lab that was also provided. OK, so this this is something that we actually uh, made sure. So this is for a view of our physics lab. You can actually see if those of you who have seen an ammeter or voltmeter, and feel that this actually looks like an automator, right? And you can actually connect these wires and put on the switch and actually see uh, the voltmeter reading changing. And you can take measurements, you can put different uh, uh, materials for this and see how, how the current or the voltage changes. So we try to make sure that the feel or feel of the lab is quite like what you would get in a physical lab. And um, so uh, these kind of things is what I call an affordances. I can modify the length of the wire, the diameter, the resistance, all of these. And of course, in, a, in um, uh, labs like uh, mathematics, the look and feel is not very important. A triangle is seen as a triangle if it has three sides and if the sides are straight. So there we can take more liberties in the look and feel. Now, how to use labs? Uh, we are, I mean, as I said, you know, even when you have physical labs available, I mean, if um, those of you who have gone to uh, your school labs, remember um, you, a whole bunch of you suddenly land up there and you don't know what to expect there. You don't know what is there on the table. You are not so you don't know what you are supposed to do. But somebody says, you know, you put that there, you put it there, and somehow you complete the reading. Right? So you are saying, okay, no, you demonstrate these labs in the class before you go to the physical lab. So they are mentally equipped. They know what they are going to see, what they are going to experiment or experience, and then take them to the lab. Because you will get more out of that half an hour or 45 minutes that you spend in the physical lab than otherwise. And once they come out of the lab, ask them questions and ask them to do in a post-physical lab uh, session on the virtual lab. Maybe whatever scenarios that you could do, you half, half did or you did not understand, you can recreate them on the virtual lab. So without losing the physical lab touch, you are able to amplify that 45 minutes into a five hour uh, you know, session in the actual lab. And of course, you can use these as a teaching aid. So you can actually bring the virtual lab right here without getting any equipment or any creating any fire hazards or whatever. So the, so the use cases are quite significant and people are looking at, uh, you know, as I said, you know, a lot of training programs NCRT is conducting regularly. We also want to look at even higher education because I think again, a lot of people are asking even computer science, everything, 
how do i teach cloud computing how do i teach programming how do i do, do these they are all all very challenging um, uh, scenarios when you go to higher education because the models are much richer we are then uh, as we started playing around with these labs and the usage was growing we realized that you know for example how do i conduct a lab exam online right so how do you do evaluation of labs so how do you, what are the standards how do we do that so these are some challenges that we are currently looking at and we also realized that you know we were we had built one of our labs for teacher aid when you know teacher actually demonstrates in the class and then the students actually perform but in the pandemic there was no teacher so students were on their own and uh, they knew they would get lost in there because that was the way um, scenario that we had uh, you know envisaged at that time so proper and timely guidance in the lab was uh, very important so that is something that we are trying to do by bringing some of the hours or you know uh, kind of uh, online help so which will tell you no 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 don't do that you know you are must do this and then only you should do that or you see this this is what you was that is something you should avoid so these kind of interventions are possible with uh, this kind of technologies we are looking at uh, even allowing the students across uh, to collaborate and uh, online right uh, building immersive experience retaining student interest using gamification ideas and uh, more challenging was you know for everybody understand what's a physical physics lab but what is an english lab what is a history lab or what is a geography lab so we have actually stretched the definition of lab to even cover those so mathematics is more like you know how do i get a feel of the theorem so if you say that you know the um, sum of the three angles of a triangle will always add up to 180 i'm not convinced but if the um, triangle is like that you mean you still will add up so you draw whatever triangle you want you use a protractor you measure the angles and say oh okay it still is 180 right so you can actually perform virtual simulations of these create as many triangles of all whatever shapes you want and measure them physically online so uh, language was much more much more of a challenge so if you go online you can actually see some of those um, uh, english labs like uh, tense conversion uh, voice conversion proposition usage these are all things that we have actually created it as labs we are now trying to look at building a broader notion of uh, language lab uh, on in that area so this was something that was very exciting. I mean, I, I kept it very brief uh, given the uh, time constraints. But uh, so it was. It is uh, technologically challenging. So what I've done now is um, engineering colleges and others, you know, even wherever you can pick up these as your final year projects, okay, and build these labs and give it to me. I will make it available to the whole country, and you will feel proud that somebody is using that uh, the, your final year project, right? Well, that I think is the greatest satisfaction because personally, when I did my BTEC, my, my 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 faculty told me that uh, that, that time expert systems were just about beginning on the horizon. He introduced them to us, and we built a complete expert system shell for him, and he would actually go all around the country and you know demonstrate that. And he may or may or may not tell our name, but we whenever we hear that name, you know, that he called that system ITM rule, he said, "Yeah, that is actually my BTEC project." You know? So. That is something I think uh, that those side of things are very important. So that's what I'm doing with uh, DJ Samgi. They have, uh, we have completed about 15 uh, labs. They are currently part of the labs portal and uh, more are uh, currently going on uh, with that group. So uh, yeah, so we are on to add another 500 labs, classes 6 to 12, covering almost every other subjects. And all these uh, ideas that we have talked about, we want to do. We are also wanted to look at uh, AR, VR, and those kind of ideas also there. Okay, so this is this is something that is I think is has a very significant potential to change education because practical come aspect in education. Whether even if you are taking a, let's say an art subject or commerce or science or any of them, these things are important because if we can build practical activities which are accessible online. You can actually make uh, a lot of these subjects more effective. So, if any of you have ideas, do tell us. We will try to work on that. Okay, so five minutes I will take and give you another interesting thread that I've been. I'm very excited about is uh, game-based learning. I'm sure all of you have played games. Okay, very familiar with the Play Store. Uh, you know the game section. Now you know all of that. Okay, can I use games to actually teach or to learn? There are those uh, brain games and all that memory. I'm not talking about that. Okay, that is a big, big. Uh, that's a game of uh, games. I am talking about. Can I teach physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, English, 
by playing games. Okay. So again, there are there is a lot of lot of uh, question marks and issues around it. So uh, you know, maybe in a detailed time, I'll tell you more about it. So uh, everybody has obviously been interested in games uh, from uh, even before the digital uh, era. We all played games as kids. You know, uh, even when you have no technology, you still uh, would find your own games. And today, uh, again, as somebody said, you know, we are talking about digital natives. All of you are born with a mobile phone in your hand. Okay, I mean, people are saying born with a silver spoon, but uh, that is not very important now. A mobile phone in hand is more important. So that's the generation that we are uh, dealing with. So maybe some of these will look more natural to you. I mean, for most of us, the old timers, playing a game is still a challenge online. Because you know, getting your your uh, fingers don't actually you know manage the control that you people do, very effectively do. So for you, it could it could be a great opportunity. And I think some of you would have read that uh, there are some companies who, when you apply to the company, they ask you on to go online and play a game, and the game decides the first level of selection is in or out. Why? Because when you play a game, you are at your natural self most. Right, because you get absorbed in it, you will not try to fake ah, this question. I think I should give that answer, then only he will select me. You won't get because you you cannot think when you if you are actually absorbed in the game. Right. So you actually expose your personality, good or bad, in, in the game environment. And it is much easier to assess you. Right. So these are all ideas that people are exploring with uh, so games seem to fascinate everyone. So can it help improve learning in any way? So that, uh, but we understand that uh, building good educational games is a, is a hard job. Okay, again, I will just give you a sense of what we are trying to look at, and um, later you can explore. So, what is the game? There are so many people who have actually tried to define what is the game. So, look at uh, this last one. Game is the set of positions from among which the player can choose in a given state of the game, and by extension, in mechanics, for example, the set of possible positions. And thus, movement of a system and organ of a mechanism that has further been subject to certain conditions. Have you ever looked at a game like that? You, you only play, right? So, I mean, if you dissect the game, what does what it actually consist of? Right? So, we are now trying to break it up and say, okay, uh -huh, this is what a game is, you know, core of it. All that uh, jing bang uh, muscular uh, warriors hanging and attacking on uh, flying forces, that's just a ramification. What is actually the game trying to do? Okay, so, and uh, I mean, you, know, you go to Play Store uh, game section, you will find all these things board game, card game, role game, dice game, conversation game, platform games. There are at least about 20 categories of them. So there is a lot of variety in games. So we are talking about games. It is not simply two persons game. It can be multiplayer. It can be a single person. It can be online. It can be offline. Can, all kinds of things. There. So a huge interesting area. So again, uh, you know, some of the students at uh, DJ and other colleges are actually built small games for some of these things. Okay. So these are those kind of categories. So why are we interested in educational games? Because I can simulate. Exactly like I talked about virtual life, I can create a um, what should I say, uh, uh, artificial world and make you believe in it. So when you play these games, when you are in the game, you forget all uh, laws of nature and physics and chemistry and all that, right? Whatever that game world puts you is that. So, so you have flying cats and you know all that. You don't feel uncomfortable about it because you get immersed in that. So. It is a very a fantastic way to create a world in which I can convey what I want to convey, right? So whether it is, uh, you know, um, um, uh, solar system or extraterrestrial things or um, uh, what you call deep inside atomic structure, I can create worlds and I can make you believe in it. And that's that's the best way to learn. Of course, the problem is when you come out, you should be able to connect with the reality back again. Okay, so that's that's a, that's a challenge. And uh, so basically, like the um, recruitment one, I said, I if I just collect the statistics of you playing the game, I have a better idea about what you are and what you are capable than any answer that you can give because they would have been mugged up from somewhere or the other, right? So because your behavior is much better expressed there. Okay, so there are there are um, uh, now some bunch of uh, educational games are there. But building good educational games, which is sufficiently absorbing that students would want to, to play, but at the same time, the learning also takes place seriously, is a hard job. 
so uh, you don't find a whole lot of really good educational game but these are some of the examples that you can find so typically what you do is you know you uh, you look at uh, what is the content that you want to teach let's say i want to teach uh, mathematics uh, you know let's say linear algebra or i want to teach uh, newton's law or whatever and then you look at a game concept which can actually marry the two things together build build a game environment so um, just just to um, clarify that point i'm sure all of you have played snakes and ladders right what does that game actually do what is, what what is what is that board what is what is snake and what is ladder sorry right snake is the punishment ladder is the reward and the dice just gives you a way to move move in there and then you reach the end you are you are, i mean in that case who reaches first is the winner and you can have any other way also so this reward and penalty i can replace it with anything else this dice i can replace it by asking you you know a question in physics or you know maybe a java programming questions give me a program if the program runs you get 6 points i have actually transformed snake and ladder into a java programming game so actually i have done this with uh, some of the students we we built a generic mechanism so that uh, the dice is a replaceable component you can define what your dice is it can be an mcq on something it can be a gk question it can be an english vocabulary question if you answer it correctly you move if you don't and you are some and based on the name answer you either get a snake or a ladder so that same idea you can actually make be make uh, for educational content because okay, so these are kind of ideas uh, like uh, someone actually built a golf game a golf is also like that if you hit it correctly uh, towards the right target it will, you will uh, go, go to near the hole if you don't it will go to some mushy or water or bodies you end up uh, suffering there so your right answer wrong answer can be used to mark the golf so there was somebody actually built a golf game using periodic table so it randomly ask you what is uh, give me uh, this property is it true for this um, element if you say yeah correctly your ball goes to the hole if not it goes to the mushy land right so like that you can build your normal games that you all know board into an educational uh, element and many teachers do that you know in the creativity ask you to play games so as i said a game if you open it up what does it contain there is a game world right so the game world could be a palace it could be some some hypothetical kind of place okay and uh, so some some uh, physical space which is imagined and then there are objects in the game okay so it may be static objects there may be dynamic objects and they have behavior some things move or change color or change uh, become bigger smaller all of that so you can look at the various objects in the game and then the game transitions from state to state so i can look at what are the different states and how do you move from one state to the other what are the moves that are permitted okay so you can visualize it much better with a chess uh, in mind but uh, any game you can actually visualize it like this there is a position and somebody does something you move to the next position right so there is a there is a state, a state transition network that can be created on top of it you build a punishment rewards uh, layer and a winning condition a goal structure that you should reach 100 first or you should reach um, uh, you know ma, ma, what you should acqu um, accumulate this many points so you decide whatever is your winning conditions so you can dissect the game and kind of understand that this is how uh, the, the the game structure is you can then map it to uh, educational content so and on, um, uh, you can add uh, points badges letter boards and all that things again all, so all of you are familiar with all of that so these are kind of motivational elements right because if yeah, there is a competition and that fellow is just marginally 1% ahead of me i will stay for another 2 hours and i beat him I mean, at least i'll try to beat him right so that when you do it on a healthy mode it's very good because it gives you that spirit if i ask you to read uh, 25 pages of your textbook you'll not read it. but if i tell him that you know he is just one page ahead of you and i'm going to give him a chocolate you will possibly read four more pages uh, at that show right so there is an element of this psychology so and this is not just the game there is a lot of theory associated with it so if you are familiar with uh, education literature there are learning theories from behaviorism to constructivism so constructivism says that 
you cannot teach somebody you can only facilitate him to learn so that so we create scenarios and that person creates his own uh, knowledge right so the, these are this is exactly what we are trying to do you create scenarios so that he uh, remembers or he learns what is required there's also thing called uh, flow theory zone of proximal development x dots and laws so these are some of the theories which kind of guides us on how to build effective uh, game environment okay so i'm going to stop here i think i'm pretty good on time um so uh, these are my email addresses uh, the official one as well as the unofficial one um so this, the gmail is guaranteed to work and i'm sure you now nobody will forget that um <laughs> well, well one thing i've realized that internet is not a very humble place because about 20 years back i created the uh, this id the little sashi you go to any new platform the little sashi is always available but any other sashi you will not get okay so I, <laughs> So my my handle on almost every social media platform, whether Facebook, everywhere, everywhere it is that little chassis, and it is certainly going to be available. Okay, that's uh, fun aside. So technology transforming the landscape of education, the, both the teaching side and the uh, learning side, is going in a big way. A lot of ground technologies like cloud and all that is on one side, and uh, all these things that you can see are all are significant aims, uh, aids in uh, improving that. But the core ideas, looking at AI and these models, games, etc., are also very powerful uh, models which can actually make learning uh, a lot more fun. So, yes, but technology is not a solution to any problem. Okay, we 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 understand that today as well, as much as it we did earlier also. Appropriate use of technology in an appropriately molded form is the is the requirement, which is which is where teachers have a big role to play. They know uh, where technology can play a positive or negative role and bring it in there. So that's that's very important. And also, if you are pursuing a research interest, there's a lot of uh, lot of opportunities to uh, go in that line as well. So thank you. Um, so you can connect back if you want to take up any of these things further or want to explore. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your word of wisdom. Uh, now, uh, we would uh, like to introduce uh, Dr. Abhijit Banu Bakode, sir. He's a uh, leader, researcher, author, award winner, and also he's working in capacity of principal at MIT Institute of Computer Science. He's having more than 25 years of academic training and industrial experience. Sir has received a PhD degree in computer science from Symbiosis uh, International University. And he's also having done his ME degree in computer engineering from Pune University. <laughs> Apart from that, sir is member of Board of Studies, Academic Council of various universities. He is also the recipient of MIT Gaurav Award. And uh, apart from that, he is also the guide to many Indian universities. At the same time, sir has published over 100 papers at international journal cell conferences. He's also authored several uh, books of national repute, international repute of Springer and other publishers. We welcome you to our conference, sir, and we look forward to hear it from you. Before that, uh, we would also like to welcome our principal, ma'am, to the conference. She was busy, but then she, she had made it to the event. Thank you, ma'am, for the event. Right, <laughs> 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 
Queen's going to read for us. Good morning to everybody. That's my video of research is very optimization object oriented data challenges for me. But today I'm going to discuss on a very different topic. Probably I'm trying this topic first time with you people. <laughs> the role of digital technology in education transformation. I'm extending the topic of spur only. We have already talked about the vlogs and uh, the gamifications. If you look at the ancient system, there's a grand goal of education was philosophical. For the man making and character building. Okay. During this time, religious and spiritual education was prominent, and there were a lot of universities called as Nalanda and Takshila. The time has changed. Now, it's, the education become more economic oriented. It's a very job oriented education. It's a practical based education. How can you talk about the quality of education? But to provide the education for the student is economically productive. He has to have a balanced life. He has to be work in society and he will enjoy the peaceful life. Okay. He has to enhance in the his career okay. and he has to go in a very uh, different kind of heights. So the higher education, if you look at the concept of higher education, first is Reproduction of qualified human resources. Then we know that the country is developed with the help of qualified human resources only. We have to have a training and research career. We have to have an efficient management, efficient professions. Then there are three angles. We can say that teaching, learning, and researchers. Okay. But now nowadays the fourth dimension is very important, and that what placement. You all like you take the admission in the colleges on the basis of placement post. On the first day of admission, you can take that ki kitna percent placement hota hai, kitna package milta hai mujhe. So placement is the fourth dimension and it's very important nowadays. What are the functions of higher education? Okay. To cater the skill manpower needs. Change the curriculum according to the needs of the nation. We know that we have to satisfy the nation needs, so we have to every time we have to change the curriculum to prepare the student for research and training. We have to, to provide specialized training courses as per social and economic demands. And sometimes the teachers also reluctance by shifting from chalk to talk, uh, chalk and talk to the ICT information communication technologies. Then uh, education for life, education through life, and education throughout life is the slogan. Okay. My student has to be a continuous learner. If you look at the field like information technology, continuous learning is very important. Then to promote the international cooperation to internationalization, research, technology, and networking. But if you teach this, if you teach today the way we we are taught yesterday, we are not preparing the student for today or tomorrow. We have to change. 
the teachers are digital immigrants as already said that we are digital immigrants we are using the technology but you people are digital native you have grown in technology Look, taxonomy. I think all the teachers and so students are you know familiar with the Bloom taxonomy. What is that? What is Bloom taxonomy? What is Bloom's taxonomy? Any anyone? No, I'm talking about the digital Bloom taxonomy. It's the advanced version of Bloom taxonomy. <laughs> Teacher can also answer. <laughs> So there are ways of learning. First of all, we are remembering. Okay. Then we have to understand. We have to apply the knowledge, analyze the knowledge. Okay. So it is completely changed nowadays. Remembering is to retrieve the information just Google. Nowadays we are remembering the information with the help of Google. The student should know which kind of keyword has to place into the Google so that he will get the exact information. Understanding. We have to apply the various bookmarks. We have to apply the we have to get the metadata that is about the data about the data. Then next is applying with the help of presentation, with the help of Wikipedia. We have to apply the knowledge. Then analyzing with the help of various survey tools. Students learn to process the data, divide into various parts, divide the entire data into certain models, and apply that. And next the criteria based judgment to process of reviewing and evaluating with the help of Excel and all. And finally, we have to create a new a coherent product for using the vast knowledge. Which with the help of this technologies, we have to understand the things and we have to create a product okay, which are totally different one. This is all about the Bloom Digital Taxonomy. So we are at the era of education 4.0. So we have to satisfy the needs of industrial revolution 4.0. Okay. So in order to satisfy the needs of industrial revolution 4.0, we have to understand education 4.0. Okay. So What is education 4.0? Anyone? What is education 4.0? Yes. What is education 4.0? Anyone? Just Google and tell me.
एजुकेशन फोर पॉइंट जीरो वर्चुअल एजुकेशन ए गुड एनी एनी मन टेक्नोलॉजी इंटीग्रेटेड टीचिंग लर्निंग वेरी कार्ड टेक्नोलॉजी इंटीग्रेटेड एनी एनी अदर सी बिफोर डिस्कसिंग दिस we are discussing the industrial revolution for pandzi so starting in the 19th century and for the power and steam of water rapidly increased the productivity of labor there was an era of machinization and steam in the jap james watt's first time uh, invented uh, the steam and power there is a lot of revolution in that industry 2.0 to the mass in this production when the electricity was the key driver at that time industry 3.0 The use of computing the industry in the development of personal computers when there was the year of computer in the in the year, year of say uh, in 1970s. Now it's the industrial revolution 4.0. We can also call it as a digital revolution with the help of various kinds of technologies like artificial intelligence, block data, cloud computing. So the various kinds of tech, uh, innovations are used in the. Pillars of Industrial Revolution 4.0. Okay. So, I have written actually the smart industry with the help of various kinds of pillars. What are these pillars? You can just remember these are the A, B, C, D, A, R, E, I. Artificial intelligence, blockchain, big data, cloud computing, data analytics, A, B, C, D, A, R, E, I. Electrical manufacturing that is 3D printing, robotics. Augmented reality, virtual reality, and the Internet of Things. These are the eight major pillars of industrial revolution. The breadth and depth of these technologies transform the entire system of the industry, production, management, and the human resource. These are all the buzzwords nowadays: digitization, smart city, Internet of Things, big data. disruptions see in order to reach the industry 4.0 work tools we have to teach the student in a way so that it will be absorbed in the industrial revolution 4.0 so student should know the various kinds of soft skills he must have a industrial knowledge he must have a smart sensors he must have a knowledge of various kinds of sensors And again, the control systems at the heart. You can say that the control system is the heart of information technology. There are various control systems that you can find in the computers, keyboards, mouse. There are the various controllers. And you have to have a knowledge of networking nowadays. Networking is very important. And in the last block, that is called as how to extract the data, data analytics or data scientists. This data extraction is very important nowadays. So these six building blocks are very important. The student should know each and every block to satisfy the needs of industrial revolution for point. So to meet the need of IR four point zero, we have to use modern teaching and learning methods that lead to education four point zero. Again, what is education four point zero? I think. So can you just see the, the revolution in education? If you look at the education one point zero, it was. The Guru Shishya Karamka. The education was totally lecture oriented and the memorization. Education two point zero when the printing press got invented, and at that time the books was the only thing that the students are extracting knowledge with the help of books only. Earlier there in the education one point zero there was one to one education, but in the case of two point zero there is one to many education. Education 3.0. When the internet, you can say that when the WWW came into the existence, that was the era of education 3.0, beginning of digital age. Now it's the era of education 4.0. It's the learner centric, not the teacher centric. It's the learner centric 
innovation oriented education we can also call it is as an intelligent education with the help of various technology that is again abcd artificial intelligence blockchain cloud computing and we can satisfy the industrial revolution 4.0 and also the outcome based education that we are already since we are heading the national board of accreditation or nag outcome based education So education 4.0 means intelligent education. It is learning through machine. It is the personal education with the help of technology, where teaching methods have slowly transformed into the technology based teaching with the help of again what A B C D A R A. What are the characteristics of education? First of all, anytime, anywhere, this education is available. At any time, there is no need of go to college and attend the lectures. It's a remote learning, free classroom. If you can uh, learn the theory you know, outside the classroom, okay. and you can perform the practical in the college itself. Student customized learning. The student can learn the technologies with the help of various kinds of technological tools like Kahoot, Quizlet. And student centric, they decide what they want means according to the needs of the student. We have to satisfy them. Okay, and the students are involved in the syllabus training that is called a student centric education, project based learning. So whatever you have learn into your three years of graduation, you have to apply your skills. It's called as project based education learning, Experimental learning through internship, mentorship, and project after the completion of say two semester, three semester, you have to perform the internship so that you will get the practical exposure in the industries. We will experience practical applications. Okay. Means students, instead of students, teachers also have to involve in that. Okay. Instead of finding the you know project grants in DST, AICT student teachers has to work with Wipro and TCS so that you will get the practical. Knowledge. Differential assessment of student instead of two to three hours examination, student maintain the digital portfolios. Like that, we are having a different kind of portfolio. If you did any kind of program, if you invent any kind of program, okay, you have to add this program or algorithm into your portfolio. So instead of preparing the CV, you have to present the portfolios. Student ownership, flexible delivery, involvement of student is a seller information. The students are involved into the framing of syllabus. So we have to align the industry 4.0 and the education 4.0. In order to satisfy the industry 4.0, we have to align with the education 4.0. Flexible production line, we know that the uh, industries are always flexible. Okay. So according to the industry, we are also flexible. Flexible learning path. We have to learn anywhere. Okay. Online quality control, format to assessment, assessment. There are, there are two concepts, summit to assessment and format to assessment. Summit to assessment is at the end of the exam in the, uh, semester, we are conducting an examination that is called as formative. But in case of summit to assessment, so summit to assessment, in case of format to assessment, after every, every interval of time, we are conducting the examination of the students. Then many custom products, different uh, solutions to problem. At the, as according to the customer need, there are different so industry has to manufacture the different products. So according to that, for every problem, student, so the student has to invent a different kind of solutions. Lifelong learning, continuous teacher training. So it means we have satisfying. The industry according to the. So there are five eyes of learning. First of all, imbibing. Earlier there was only a chalk and talk method. And we, we were extracting the knowledge with the help of books only. But nowadays the things are different. It's totally changed. There are a lot of resources you can expect. If people are expecting the knowledge from different kinds of source, YouTube has. Okay. There are various sites are there. 
So success is not very difficult nowadays because the information availability is more. In training, I sir said that we have to teach the student with the help of game based, game based learning, game based are nothing but the tools assessments. Then interpreting application of knowledge for solving complex problems. Is you have to apply your knowledge in order to solve the complex problems. Interest, develop interest and curiosity. We have to cover, teacher has to cover the part of one concept in the class and another concept has to use the students, innovating, think differently and come up with the original concepts. Then we have to be very smart, like was Pando. Five warriors. Student has to be very express. What student will be? What exactly student? We have to be very specific. What exactly the requirement of students? How student will be assessed? Then can he or she achieve the objectives after they learning one session? Whether the student exactly learn or not, that is very important. Then appropriate uh, for for the course complete before deadline. We have to be very time bound. We have to finish. The syllabus we have to finish the course within the time bound. So what is taught is not what is learned. Okay. Every time we taught the student, but how many times the students actually learn? That is very important. The student has different abilities, personalities, and come from variety of background. Every student having different kinds of background. Okay, so teachers are you know teaching to the students, but how this what what exactly the students are really learn or not that we have to find out. There is a different concept called as cafeteria model of education. Cafeteria model is exactly like a slide, but students are offered a variety range of courses from various fields. One can choose whatever they are interested in. And can create its own pattern. What is time to be? According to the needs of the students, we have to serve to the students. We have to frame the timetable according to the needs. There is a choice based educational system, is, uh, you know, we are having. Okay. But in fact, I don't know how, how many colleges are really implemented this choice based education. It's nothing but the chaos based education system. Because we are having limited number of teachers, we are having limited number of classes. So every time this, there are so many electives, but we are you know asking the student you have to select this subject only because this is a very good subject and you will get job offers in that subject. But, but the, the thing will be totally changed tomorrow. Most probably the student comes to you and he will ask to you that I want a 50% knowledge of science, I want a 20% electronics of, and communication. 10% of architecture, 15% of electrical engineering, and 5% of at all. Okay. Tomorrow, these things will come. Okay. Now there will be not a you know engineering that uh, bachelor of engineering in computer science. This will be a general engineering. It will be a cocktail of all kinds of things. The so things will be changed very rapidly. So young people need skills and experience for a job of the future, not for the past. 70% of young people are currently entering into workplace in job that will be radic radically affected by the automation. So there is going to be rapid change, this change is going to be visible. So most of the industries are already disappeared. If you look at the hotel industry, if you look at the aviation industry, will hardly exist in another two years because of this invention of smart sports, okay, all the PCO, then all, all totally vanished. So tomorrow there will be no college also. There will be a completely remote learning. Okay. So generation C is defined as the tenuous age between 1995 to 2020. So we are all the digital uh, natives. We can just see the comparison of digital immigrants and digital natives. In earlier days, we had a face-to-face -face interaction. Now there will be a virtual interaction. Place control by social media. Okay. It's Android each, more distractions. Earlier it was a book reading happy. Now it's the world of video and WhatsApp. We'll get the knowledge with the help of 
videos and whatsapp it was the first career path now it's a diverse career path so students are you know who are opting uh, who are going for mechanical engineering tomorrow he will work with the information technology industries so there are different kinds of career paths limited access to information abandoned access of information feature dot jobs are completely changed will be most and is not in the machine but combination of both human and machine we get the jobs robotics we get coding creative things multi intelligence So all kinds of jobs are available in the uh, big data analytics, Internet of Things, machine learning, augmented and virtual reality. So we have to change the paradigm. We have to demand it instead of supply it education. We have to give the education as per the demand. Okay, it's a demand in education. Job oriented instead of knowledge based. Then incorporate the disruptive technology skill set. Lifelong learning will be there. Then instead of a bulky course like three years course, four years course, there will be a modular courses of six months, one year. So modular degree instead of one shot going. Emphasize on emotional intelligence and IQ alone. Focuses on purposefulness, mindfulness, and leading to happiness. X index. In research thing, we are talking about the X index. I index. Okay, so we have to, we teachers, we have to think about the happiness we make of the students, whether the, our students are happy or not. So we have to think about this happiness index. So we have moved from in 19th century, the agriculture economy, so we moved to industry economy, knowledge economy, and now it's the innovation society that is available as 21st century. If you look at the previous skill, this kind of skill we are expecting from the students: quality control, okay, complex problem solving, emotional intelligence. To 2020, now the skill sets are totally changed. What we are expecting? We are expecting the critical thinking. We are expecting the creativity from the students. We have to expect that the student has to work collaboratively so that he will be successful in the IT industries. Good communication, information. We are expecting the media literacy nowadays. Literacy means what? Whether a particular student has very smart enough to get to extract the knowledge from the internet. That is called as media literacy. Then flexibility, leadership, initiative, productivity, and social skills. So all these kinds of skills are expected nowadays. What is the action plan for education 4.0? Okay, we have to focus on four C's. First is communication, collaboration, critical thinking, creativity. We teacher, we have to understand means what, what exactly, how many teachers, how many papers are based on creativity? How many questions we are asking for the critical thinking in our question paper? Okay. Then programming and ICT are the compulsory courses. In all of the colleges, like engineering colleges, nowadays the ICT and programming is one of the separate department. In case of art and commerce science, this will be a compulsory course. Industry oriented curriculum, teacher based curriculum delivery, and all dynamics are education towards the education 4.01. But it's not enough. We have a curricular, we need to formulate strategy to support the education 4.0. Encourage game based and play based, break down into the various modular courses, create a safe environment for learning, develop a growth mindset, promote nurturing relationship, allow to focus on bridge courses. We have to use certain kind of bridge courses. If the particular students are, if the particular student is not from the IT or computer background, okay. So we have to introduce the bridge course so that he will get the knowledge of IT and computer. Encourage reflector and design. So there will be a 
provide clear learning and objective and new kinds of approach offer appropriate students in order to set up rewards to the students then inquiry based learning helps students to take advantage of that to in in order to uh, you know implement this education for point of view we have to introduce certain new things into the curriculum and basic knowledge then we have to have a core courses we have to have a elective courses supportive courses practical courses student social responsibility industry and on job training there will be a balance syllabus of ethics and morality knowledge and skills we will get this integration of technology education 4.0 so we have started from chalk and talk then whiteboard marker our presentation in fact in fact we already explained all these technologies okay this we 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 are teaching from last 20 years so we already explained this black and board to the innovative technology now we have to think beyond the education 4.0 there will be education 5.0 so the vision of education 4.0 is the human rope over co-working after 10 years or 15 years there will be a robot will actually teach to the students in the vision robot and human will work together so robot teach student and interact with them as a teacher after 10 or 15 years so existing professor lecturer teacher will be completely changed robot based robot chat and teacher become robot robot chat and robot chat so all this and what about the students student become learner so all the students those who are learn they become learner so what will be then the role of with the progress the teacher then what will be the role of robot what will do Teacher. Yeah. What will be the role of teachers? Teacher. Correct. Would you like this potential role of <laughs> <laughs> professor teacher in education five point zero? Will become a head of charm. Controlling the bionics and gadgets. We will apply various kinds of gadgets. Artificial. We'll apply this AR, VR, various kinds of technology, augmented reality, virtual reality. So, Edu Charman, who can transform the current education into education 4.0. This is a major shift in education. Earlier, it was job seeker. Now, job creators and balanced citizenship. Focus on input. Now, the focus are outcomes. Then reliance on the government resources, then highly centralized model of earn autonomy of institutions. Then earlier it was a separate of private and public institution. Now it was it is completely changed. So there is a major shift in education with the because of the education 4.0 and 5.0. There are certain challenges. Migration from traditional or blended learning to a fully virtual and online delivery strategy will be not happen overnight. Definitely, it will take a lot of time. Student has too many sources of distraction constantly changing. There are a lot of distraction in case of uh, education 4.0. Barriers to train the teacher and to acquire online driven competencies in planning, implementing, and assessing performance. Teachers are also having lots of barriers. They are not easily trained in one night. From you know, technical requirement, lot of technical requirement with the lack of good internet connections, high computer specifications, lack of telecommunications. So all these you know, challenges are there. So Malaysia has you know, already implemented this education 4.0. Thailand is also implementing education 
Myanmar, the United States, Canada, all these countries are now implementing this education 4.0. So the rise in the revolution of industries lead to the revolution of the field of the education. Education 4.0 brought more creative ideas into the students and teachers as well. Integrating more current technology, all this technology that we have already seen, A, B, C, D, and this AR, AI, all this te technology that is getting integrated. The real problem with our education system is, is that it test memorization. We are, are, are we uh, checking or testing the memorization of the students or not learning or the intelligence of the student? We are asking the students to, you know, though your handwriting is poor, but you have to write the paper. Because what? Why? Because we need evidences. So my sincere thanks to convener and co-convener. Thank you, sir. Hello, we can meet. Uh, thank you, sir, for your time. And it was really an inspiring session on education 4.0. Thank you. Is can it Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. One minute. No, no echoing your part. One minute. One minute. <laughs> Hello. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Give me some time. I'll download your presentation. Okay, thank you. Video channel के लाइट
Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so, thank uh, you. Yeah. I'll control from here. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Neelam. And um, um, I like the idea of uh, Panch Pandav, the previous uh, presenter presented, <laughs> and um, the robots um, definitely are the future, but um, not to worry. Um, uh, robots uh, are artifacts, which I am going to discuss. The artifacts, for to develop uh, the artifacts, we need uh, people. We need the intelligent um, um, uh, skilled manpower. Uh, not to worry. Um, um, the future of our um, future generations and skilled people coming up uh, from the universities. And so far, uh, they have discussed about the educational aspects uh, by previous uh, speech, uh, speakers. But um, mine is more uh, on industry oriented uh, uh, speech uh, connected to logistics and supply chains and um, how the IS artifacts can be designed and developed like uh, robot is an artifact. And it's, uh, they are driven by a lot of data and information. Uh, in my case, it is um, spatially oriented logistics and supply chain data. Uh, how you can m map and model that in uh, various uh, uh, digital uh, business systems. Um, next, uh, the um, you can contact uh, me. Uh, my email address is there. And if anyone is interested to collaborate with me and um, associate with my work, um, um, you can do that. And there are other researchers uh, who are uh, connected to the School of Management, um, more interested in supply chain systems, logistics. Um, you can make contacts with us. And uh, next, uh, next slide, please. And uh, the Neelam. Yeah, we publish uh, uh, some uh, research articles uh, in high impact journals. And one of them uh, is highlighted here, design of, uh, is my voice clear now? Is my voice audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, OK. N there is no echoing effect. OK, sir. No, from here also there is no echo. OK, OK. Thank you very much. And yeah. uh, one of the articles which we published, um, um, that is a design of a SWOT analysis model and this evaluation in diverse uh, digital business ecosystem context. Um, it has a uh, citations within one year, very short period of time. We have 200 citations, very interesting article. And the other article which um, is on um, Journal of Business Research is a highly impacted, uh, highly respected journal on big data guided upstream business research and this knowledge management. I think uh, the researchers who are um, involved in big data, especially in the business context, um, must look at this uh, article. And um, we also published um, uh, business digital ecosystems. Uh, they are emerging and the concepts and context are uh, highly uh, dynamic stage. And they are published in Wired Data Mining and Knowledge Discovery. The, this is a highly impacted uh, journal. And uh, these are a few journal papers which we published uh, that have motivated us in pursuing the research uh, um, in logistics and supply chain management systems. Am I clear? Next uh, slide, please. Yeah, we we uh, make we made use of a lot of definitions, uh, and the key definitions uh, are shown here: sustainability, ecosystem, knowledge management. The researchers um, have to get involved and understand the 
use of these keywords in your research, especially the ecosystem, the digital ecosystem, the supply chain can be an ecosystem, or a community with the groups of interconnected domains and systems with the linkable big data sources, including the communion of tools and technology is another ecosystem. So understanding uh, of these uh, key definitions is a prerequisite for building the artifacts connected to the business uh, um, uh, IS, uh, business IS uh, uh, artifacts. Basically, uh, the uh, another feature is attribute journey mapping and modeling, AJMM, has a lot of scope and uh, opportunity. Attribute can be a logistic. Uh, there are many number of attributes in logistics, Mon number of attributes in uh, supply chain management systems, and uh, these can be mappable and modeled and accommodated in uh, different uh, repository systems. The IS artifacts representing the data relationships are the so-called uh, egghead relationships or the logical data relationships. Are the attributes are the ability to track and supply chain consignments and quality of trade and transport infrastructure events are accessible using these IS artifacts. Next one, please. So basically, the, um, uh, the traditional IS artifacts uh, have uh, dra certain drawbacks uh, in terms of uh, aligning the data systems of various business systems worldwide. And uh, the supply chains can exhibit a broad range of logistic uh, structural features until the correct material is deliverable to projects, including precise information on business logistic routes. For that, uh, we need uh, data structuring, repository system, mining, data mining, visualization, and interpretation in a methodological framework to improve the, the connectivity between different elements and process of supply chains. The data and the information include entities, dimensions, and objects connected to the supply chain elements and processes, and which are the building blocks of uh, the multi-dimensional frameworks and their uh, metadata repository systems. The construction model features are anatomically articulated, co cognizing various elements and process of supply chains, including the supply rules. Geographic information systems, a lot of role to play in business and logistics supply chains and their adaptability in connecting disrupted logic, uh, logistics and supply chains worldwide. Next one, please. So our job is uh, to include uh, some sort of uh, domain ontologies, uh, conceptual and contextual business digital ecosystems, big data innovations. All can streamline the connectivity between various events of supply chain operations. The motivation is the existence of large size volumes and varieties of uh, uh, business data sources in spatial dimensions. The events can occur within various elements and processes which can e exhibit new scopes of research in spatial dimensions. The big data innovative IS construction models are the part of artifacts to design the uh, design science information system framework and uh, for which uh, we need to identify, understand the business alignments at various locations for which we need to model and map uh, the various attributes uh, involved in the uh, sub various supply routes. Next one, please. So the organizational business and the information strategies must be matched before you design an artifact. This uh, I have shown here a schematic view where the researchers who are involved in 
uh, digital um, businesses must understand the strategic uh, viewpoints and their connectivity. And um, the concept of uh, ecosystem, uh, the concept of the sustainability have a, lo a lot of role to play in uh, interpreting the spatially and um, uh, time um, time sustainment, human survival, including human functions, business functions and activities, although the impacts of diseases in polluted environments are widespread, especially in the pandemic times. So interlink between systems is interpretable with coexisting associations, which we call as uh, egghead uh, relationship, data relationships. These are immensely useful in building uh, knowledge through attribute journey mapping and modeling process. The current research scope and domain are broad and multidimensional. For example, human ecosystems, though broadly describe human environments, but healthcare, natural environment influence human existence, including businesses ecologically. Next one, please. So in the entire uh, life cycle of supply chain, we need uh, we expect the structured data and quality of uh, information um, which are highly demanding for resolving the, the modeling and management uh, challenges. The design of uh, IS artifacts in supply chain context, particularly in spatial dimensions, must match with your information flows, business needs, by deciphering uh, meta-knowledge of supply chain operations and uh, ascertaining the logistic performance. The construction of uh, IS artifacts and logical multidimensional models can contribute to the makeup of your overall integrated framework. The motivation envisions optimized costs for from supply chain ecosystems and the data modeling strategies to derive and align industry operations, including large business processes in spatial dimensions. Next one, please. The integration is very important. And um, the inconsistency in um, previous artifact designs can disorganize the data systems and hinder logical mapping and modeling, for which we need uh, an integrated uh, mapping process. So the effectiveness of business models has become a significant issue and indeterminate, causing the prototype evaluation to be uncertain. Next one, please. So the, this is a, a three-dimensional schematic view connecting entities and attributes of various uh, strategies. It can be the strategy, can be business, the government, e-government strategy, the organization strategy and information strategies. All the attributes uh, involved in these strategies must be gathered in your modeling process. And the big data essentially um, has a lot of role to play in um, describing the spatial temporal ecosystems data. Next one, please. So there are certain uh, research questions put uh, by various uh, uh, research audience uh, in uh, University of Melbourne. Um, um, when I presented that, I, I just wanted to read that for the benefit of the audience there. Why do we need the design uh, constructs and models in the logistics management context? How do we evaluate IS construction models in the robust modeling and management perspectives? For that, uh, we designed the objectives like articulate IS guided uh, business logistics and supply chain construction models using design science theory. Your um, researchers must be aware of uh, design science research theory that can be usable in interconnecting the supply chains and logistics in spatial dimensions. Evaluate the IS artifacts in the logistics uh, performance context. There are several research uh, articles published in this direction. I think um, if you want, I can share some of the knowledge of and the research articles published by earlier researchers. 
in this direction. Next one, please. So similar uh, questions were asked by uh, other uh, domain experts. What is the need of interconnecting human healthcare environment and business ecosystems through IS artifacts? How do we achieve the connectivity and evaluate ecosystem sustainment? We use cross domain research and develop IS articulations and connect ecosystems to understand the sustainability phenomena. Human healthcare environment businesses, all these ecosystems are interconnectable through our uh, IS uh, integrated frameworks and repository systems. Having interpreted several attribute dimensions in diverse ecosystems, we build IS artifacts to evaluate the relationships between respective data ecosystems of multiple domains. Next one, please. These are some of the research elements uh, for building a sustainable framework like domain sustainability. Domain sustainability is important to understand, assimilate that knowledge in your modeling process. Data integrity, salience, repository accessibility, security, knowledge cogency and adequacy, business viability, ecological function and resilience, and their assorted attributes are all to be incorporated in your modeling process. Building connectivity attributes in the proposed sustainable framework is articulated in this schematic diagram here. Next one, please. I, I have explained um, to the researchers uh, for the benefit of researchers at your school, at your college, Design science has a lot of role to play, how you design the models, how you design the constructs, how you design the artifacts, how you design the prototypes and interconnect with your business needs and that match with, with your day-to-day -day activities of your businesses. For example, uh, the research outputs involve the constructs, models, methods and the instantation are transposable with research activities like build, evaluate, theorize, and justify. So these are some of the inputs in the design science framework development process. And uh, the framework deliverables are the constructs, models, method, and instantiation. For example, artifact, any artifact, even human body is an artifact, it's a cognitive artifact, whether it's cognitive or non-cognitive. In healthcare sciences, it is very popular. Human body description with a lot of information and data, like human anatomy, physiology, and um, human psychology. All can be interrelated and connectable within the human body. This is just an example. And this knowledge, uh, and the constructs and um, models have to be assimilated um, in your uh, design science research modeling process. Next one, please. So the methodologies I discussed here, um, the, some of the schematic schemas, how you can interconnect through various common attributes that you define from multiple domains, how they can be interconnectable, integrated, are shown in this schematic views here. Managing business supply chains in e-cloud environment, how you build various schemas and uh, build repository systems to data mining, visualization and interpretation, all can be narratable in this schema here as, as shown here. And um, these metadata or cuboid data structures can be usable for qualitative and quantitative interpretation purposes. Next one, please. So I was explaining here the logistics, business, economics, and spatial. All are interconnectable through various schemas. I have just demonstrated how you can interconnect and um, assimilate and deduce a metadata. 
that uh, have demonstrated here. And the researchers uh, have to do some uh, exercise and analysis of various the attributes identified in multiple ecosystems. Next one, please. So the researcher has to understand what, where, how, some sort of a reasoning to build uh, relationships and then uh, represent that in the form of schema. And those schemas have to be connected through a common attribute from multiple domains. Several supply chains and logistic route attributes are associated with spatial temporal dimensions. Spatial temporal dimensions are common for every schema that you generate. Next one, please. So uh, I think you skipped one anyway. Um, the, this is uh, some sort of uh, an implementation framework in which uh, the data acquisition, building relationships and ontologies between attributes, different ontology structures, big data characteristics, mapping and modeling the data attributes, data mining, visualization and data interpretation, all the stages have to be incorporated in one single framework. The attributes interpreted within human healthcare, environment and businesses can be collaborated within the components of DSIS framework. DSIS means Design Science Information System Framework. Next one, please. So the same one, I'm, I'm just showing the concept of uh, attribute journey mapping and modeling that consists of data mining, data visualization and data interpretation, knowledge discovery, how you represent the knowledge and provide that knowledge to your clients. Next one, please. These are some of the map views in terms of um, um, the northing and easting, like the coordinate data. I'm talking about the coordinate data, easting and northing, and um, how you map them and uh, prepare maps, map views. These are some of the map views, um, like. Um, the, um, the trade and track uh, consignment, business consignments, how the infrastructure attributes are behaving on your consignments, day-to-day -day consignments. Some sort of a map use you can prepare using the metadata and the framework that you have developed. The overall findings show that the ability to track and consignment instances is comparable to the quality of a business trade and transport infrastructure. So this sort of uh, map views can be uh, represented, can be um, prepared for your clients. So as to ascertain your business, uh, um, uh, business arguments or your um, influences, business um, uh, deliverables to your clients. The red color are indicative of uh, good business um, interests. They are uh, uh, logistics services supplied by the provider. The other areas, green areas, are poorly um, logistically developed. Some sort of interpretation you can build based on this map use. Next one, please. You can build uh, some uh, bubble plots using um, various attributes like population growth, life expectancy, um, CO2 emissions, GDP growth attributes. All can be individually representable in dip different uh, plot and map views. And uh, this is under results and discussions. Besides the analysis done for over 80 years of carbon emissions data suggests that CO2 in increase is due to manufacturing activities. Some sort of uh, interpretation you can build based on the analysis. Next one, please. So these are the 
uh, map uh, bubble plot views um, between population growth, life expectancy, annual CO2 emissions, and GDP growth um, in sustainable spatial dimensions for different years. Especially, I have shown for the current um, last two three years uh, pandemic uh, environments how the supply chain routes have affected severely. These are shown in these bubble plots. Next one, please. These are some of the metadata views, the um, slicing and dicing done from the um, using the various uh, data mining tools and technologies. Um, and the attributes can be mapped and shown in different uh, spatial dimensions for interpretation and knowledge discovery. Next one, please. The uh, contribution is artif IS artifact designs and evaluating their efficacy in new knowledge domains using art, uh, artifact utility evaluation properties. Lot of research articles published on utility evaluation properties. If any researcher wants to have some knowledge idea of this uh, artifact evaluation property, for example, your business um, artifact that you develop, how it can be implemented in your organization. So those uh, research articles are published in highly impacted journals. I can share with you. And um, AJMM technology ensures good quality data and their authenticity. Otherwise, it can affect the visualization and interpretation. Uh, however, in the current research, we have reconciled the data qualities and their use in the AJMM process. Next one, please. So there is immense um, scope and opportunity to add to develop the theory of design science in this current research uh, using different um, domains, applications um, of the human, healthcare, environment, and business ecological instances. Interdependence between multiple digital ecosystems ascertains the value of ec ecological solution in interpreting the sustainability phenomena. So the ecosystem constants agree, must agree with the big data guided design science framework theory and the, its elements. So the research demonstrates the balance between human, healthcare, environment, and business context to gain the economics in green environments. Next one, please. So there is a lot of future work uh, ongoing, and um, I will be happy if uh, the researchers at your college, if we have, if they have understood how you design and develop the artifact, and uh, incorporate and unify them within the design science framework consistently, um, I will be happy to work with them and uh, collaborate. And data heterogeneity and multidimensionality pose a lot of key challenges, especially in the spatial dimensions in big data context. So how you resolve that using the DISS framework? Data qualities are other challenges. So you need special skills for interpreting the data views and the bubble plots. Next one, please. So the IS approach ascertains the sustainment of multiple ecosystems, providing new knowledge. Big data have a role to play in resolving the ecosystem data complexities, including investigating the coherency between di different digital ecosystems. Mapping and modeling methodologies have successfully delineated the connectivity between multiple ecosystems through various map views and then plot views. Unless the heterogeneity of multiple ecosystems and data, data complexities are resolved, we cannot understand the sustainability between ecosystems and recognize their economic benefits. Next one. So 
the ecosystem concepts and applications can generate economic values among industries that comply with supply chain information systems. Our vision is to examine the logistics and supply chain affected by COVID-19 pandemic locations through IS models. So our outlook is to infer IS articulations that can substantially improve the global logistics movement between businesses through various value added supply chains. Big data characteristics have supported our IS artifact designs and development. Hauntologies are described wherever necessary to connect supply chains and logistic rules. I think this is the last slide. Hello? Thank you very much uh, for your attention and um, I'll be happy to take any questions if you may have. No, I think the students are waiting for lunch. <laughs> so thank you, sir. Thank you for joining online. Okay, thank you very much and um, so let me know. We are going back to our conference. So we are here extremely grateful to our keynote speaker, Dr. Sashi Kumar sir, Dr. Shastri sir and Dr. Abhijit sir, who have taken out their valuable time from their busy schedule to share their knowledge with us. Shashi Kumar sir talk about the education challenges and how the technology can help to overcome these challenges. He spoke about the virtual labs, O labs and the role of games in education. Abhijit sir, thank you for sharing your knowledge about the education 4.0 and making us aware about the role of teacher and student in education 5.0 era. Thank you Shastri sir for always supporting our conference and briefing us about your research work related to the decision science concepts implemented in business domain. So I thank, I appreciate our principal ma'am, vice principal ma'am, Sruti ma'am, Nana Sruti Anavati for continuous guidance and motivation. So on the behalf of SVKM, Usha Praveen Gandhi College and DSCIT department, I sincerely thank our president Amrish Bhai Patel and our mentor Harshad Bhai Shama. I would like to thank our convener Dr. Manisha Divte and co-convener Neelam Naik and Sunita for ensuring a maximum participation. And I would like to appreciate three of them for devoting their time and working with patients since last six months for this conference. A special mention to our registered Kalika ma'am, office staff and my all colleagues, department colleagues for helping us to run this conference smoothly. Thank you our technical team, Jagdish sir, Sandeep sir and Arun And last but not the least, this conference is not possible without participants and all of you. Thank you and all the best for your presentation. And I know you are waiting for a lunch place. Please join in room number six for your lunch. Thank you, Shastri sir. Okay, thank you. We have, uh, some announcements, announcements for you. We will have next session after the lunch break and we will join back at 1.30 p.m. We request the presenters and listeners to join the respective tracks assigned to you. Uh, in case of any technical difficulty, kindly contact us and we will make this paper presentation more interesting by selecting one best paper from each track and the best paper award will be given to you. Okay, so let's meet at 1.30. Thank you. Track 2 will be here only. So after lunch, we have to come here. Uh, track 3 will be in room number 5 and track 1 will be online. Yeah, so track two will come room number eight, track three will come room number five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Online participants.
Yeah, uh, we will meet in track one. So your presentation will start at 1.30. Thank you. Yeah.
Hello everyone. We are here. One minute. Huh? Let me join this session once again. Camera. Hello, everyone is here from track one. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. Here, here. Yeah. I'm Jayshree and Gopi Swami Nathan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. We'll start our session after some time. Yeah. Uh, let me leave this meeting and join once again. Some camera problem. I'll join once again. <laughs> 